Hey folks, in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to make a simple ocarina. To start, go ahead and just roll out two maybe golf ball sized chunks of clay and make two really shallow pinch pots. Try to keep the walls as even as you can. You can see I'm just pinching evenly all the way around and just turning the material. You can see how shallow that is. really want them to be about the same width. What's really important is the inside chamber here. You can see how it's really ready to blend together. When it's the same exact consistency, you don't need to slip and score. You can literally just pinch them together. So go ahead and just pinch them together all the way around. Go ahead and blend that seam together the best you can. Sometimes it's difficult when it's really soft plastic clay, but we want to do our best. Make sure it's unified. And this is going to be our ocarina chamber. I'm just going to go ahead and let this dry to a leather hard state and come back and I'll we'll start talking about how to turn this into a whistle and or ocarina. Okay, hi folks, we're back. And I let my two pinch pots dry. Now I have a really, looks something like a turtle shell. It's leather hard. And I've also, while I was letting that dry, made a tiny little tube out of a very thin slab of clay and I wrap that around a very thin dowel. Something like this. Let this get to the same consistency as your ocarina. Now we need to mount this. First things first, we needed to make a hole. I'm just gonna use a fiddling knife and drill down as far as I can. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Now this is really important. The air is going to be blowing this way. I'm going to make a little arrow temporarily. The air is going to be blowing this way across that sharp edge. Think about blowing across a bottle. Almost everyone has tried to do this to make a sound. We need to blow air across this back edge, but this back edge needs to be very, very sharp. So what I'm going to do is sharpen this edge from the inside. You can use a needle tool or a knife. And just keep refining it until that inside edge is sharp. This area right here is going to be sharpened from the inside. Now when you blow across it, it should make some sound. To make it easier, I, I use these little tubes. And I'm going to be mounting this tube right behind this hole to blow straight across. I'm going to go ahead and make a line on here. The top one third. 
that area is what's going to be blowing across the hole. Also make another line here so you can see that's where I need to cut it. That's going to be mounted on right behind the hole. I'm going to cut this at a 45 degree angle, roughly. And I'm going to make another line for your reference right there. So it's really important that the front of this tube does not go any further than that original line. I should be able to go ahead and just blow on this tube. And you can hear that it makes a pretty nice tone. The idea here is to, to minimize the amount of air blowing directly ac across that sharp edge. If you move it too far forward, you get no sound. Too far back, a very airy sound. You really want it to be right behind the hole until you get a very crisp tone. Once you're happy with the tone, you're going to want to go ahead and slip and score this whole area. Let me mark it. This whole area is going to be scored. Like every other video, you need to fill up those score marks and then place this right back where it belongs. Make sure not to have so much slip that the, the little hole that is right there doesn't get plugged up. And test it until it makes sound. So this is a really, really weak connection right here. So I think it's pretty important to go ahead and build up this area with some wet clay. Little tiny coil should do the job. This is really going to strengthen that, that tube. It's always a good idea to periodically check if it's still making sound. Remember that tiny little holes, all you really need, blowing straight across that sharp edge to make some sounds. Sometimes you're going to have to move that edge down or up, depending, for the ultimate sound. You'll be able to hear a difference. And the sharper that edge, generally the better the tone. So we have an ocarina, it's definitely making some sounds. Now I'd like to place my fingers on top, and these are where I'm gonna be making the holes for the notes. I like to just place my fingers wherever is comfortable. Let's make a little mark right here, and mark right there. The back end of a needle tool usually is a pretty good 
size for your holes. One thing to remember when you're making ocarinas is the bigger the hole, the higher the note. Okay, sounds pretty good still. A lot of times you will lose the tone if you don't have a, an efficient whistle, but I like to have at least four, four holes. Here I'm not going to get too many more um, notes out of this. I can go in and refine some of these edges, make the holes slightly bigger or smaller depending. But you can see this is a functional ocarina. One thing to note is that since ceramic shrinks, the tone definitely gets uh, sharper, a little higher. So the, the ocarina will always be in tune with itself, but not necessarily to a uh, a G or A or whatever chord you're playing with. I'm gonna let all these pieces homogenize up and I can choose to to make a pattern or whatnot. It, for a lot of times it's um it's just perfect just the way it is. You can put this through any firing, just very important to note that when you are glazing to not let that whole glaze shut. So a lot of times these are just atmospherically fired in like a pit fire or a sagger, um, horsehair, terrace of gelato. There's a lot of options for these. But it can be a really fun way to, to make pinch pots um, useful and playable.